started. All right, this is Jamie with NC Indie Scene. I'm sitting here with Channing Duke and Lynn Casper, the founders of the Pink Sheet Film Festival. Um, welcome. Thank you for sitting down with me tonight. Um, you guys launched tonight Wilmington's very first annual LGBTQ Film Festival. Um, first of all, tell us about what the Pink Sheet Film Festival represents and why you decided to bring it to Wilmington. Um, well, Wilmington is kind of known for its film industry, and Kukaloris has been um, having film festivals every year for an, a number of years now, and they've started making a name for themselves. And, you know, we just wanted to do something that would um, highlight LGBT people and incorporate film and the creative community that um, has been happening here in Wilmington. Yeah, I also feel like um, since it's Pride Week, everybody is um, going to Pride events, and I felt like this is a really good event to have to educate people, and not only like educate people, but to teach tolerance and to let people know that like um, even though they may not be involved directly with the LGBTQ community, community that they actually can like come to these film festivals and socialize and like be educated and become more tolerant of um, people in the community who are um, part, I guess, a quote-unquote queer community. So. And how did you guys come up with the name Pink Sheep? Well, we didn't want to just openly say that this was, you know, gay and lesbian film fest or a queer film fest. We wanted to come up with a name that was more original to kind of separate ourselves and make Wilmington stand out as having a film festival with like its own identity. Mm -hmm. So um, me and my friend Andy Myers, who also helped out with the festival, uh, looked online and researched um, some different festivals that were happening. And there's this um, group or organization in Seattle called $3 Bill. And we liked how it was kind of indirect, yet um, the name of their festival kind of hinted towards queer or LGBTQ references. Um, and so we wanted something that was kind of ambiguous yet, I don't know, kind of witty or clever. And so we researched different um, kind of references that people were using. And there was this one uh, thing that we came across where someone ref uh, referred to themselves as the pink sheep of the family. And so we kind of liked that and the imagery that stood out around it, just like seeing um, a field of white sheep and just like a pink sheep sticking out and we could both like relate to that so we thought that would be a good name and so yeah. I also feel like um, one good thing about it being called the Pink Sheep Film Festival is it doesn't just um, bring in people from the queer community but it also feel it also makes people who aren't in the queer community feel like they can be like they can um, come to it you know it's not just they feel like um, you know, I'm not queer, I can't come to this film festival, you know? So that's how I feel like if we would have, have been like a gay film festival or a lesbian film festival or something like that, people would be like, oh, I can't, I don't want to come to it because like, it's not directed towards you know? So I feel like Pink Sheet Film kind of made it um, a, a larger spectrum of like people who, who could come to it, you know? And feel like they would be accepted to come here. And especially a Pink Sheet Film, like, um, we want to accept everybody. We don't, we're not just like, here, um, like, oh, you're queer, you, you can come to the festival. We want everybody to come be educated and have a good time. And, I mean, this is your first film festival, and it did really well. You had a lot of people coming out. Um, what are your plans for next year? Have you got to that bridge yet? Um, well, I think we talked about doing reoccurring events throughout the year um, just to kind of, you know, keep queer film happening in Wilmington. Um, so doing like some kind of monthly or bi-monthly film series and then definitely we want to do another film festival next year and maybe even a bigger one. I think we've learned a lot um, this year about uh, what what you have to do to put in, what you have to put into a film festival, everything as far as programming, um, volunteers, sponsorship, stuff like that. And I think next year it's going to be a lot better. Um, it was amazing this year. But um, we definitely, it was a learning process. It was the first festival we ever had. It was the first time I've ever programmed a film festival. Um, yeah, I think it was the first time that Lynn ever programmed a film festival. Uh, it's just like a stepping stone. You know? And um, 
I, I want to definitely have it again next year as well as do the monthly screenings or try to do bi-monthly screenings. So, do something to let people know Pink Sheet Film is still here. Don't forget about us during the year. It's something we can continuously educate the community and bring tolerance to the community. And what do you hope um, festival goers will take away from the Pink Sheet Film Festival? Um, personally, I had a lot of people come up to me tonight and um, a lot of the films they saw, they were like, I think this will help the um, the older generation of the queer community um, remember what it was like going through coming out and stuff like that for the younger generation. I had a lot of people actually come up to me about right. that and say, you know, I think these are really good films. It, kind of shows people what it's like to be queer and young and growing up and having to go through all these like things with school, your family, the community, work, um, relationships, and I, I feel like people took a lot, of, uh, a lot um, away from it. Um, I heard a lot of people say it was very inspirational, so. Yeah. And the thing with film is that it can, you know, appeal to people of all different age groups, because like tonight we had older people, younger people, and everyone in between. So I think using film as a medium to um, educate and just to, you know, bring people together is very powerful. And so I think just using creative art forms in general is definitely a great way to, you know, bridge the gay community with the non-gay community and just to get people on our side. and to just show them what it's like for us and, you know, just the struggles that we go through and, you know, the happiness that we do have and, like, just small things is, like, coming out is, like, a big deal for us and I, how much that means to us. I definitely feel like um, doing things like this in the community will help bridge that gap because I feel like right now, um, especially uh, the straight community may feel that um, they can't reach out to us or may feel like disconnected from us. But um, I think having some festivals and having different kind of events and inviting them in and not just being like, oh, this is strictly, this is strictly, strictly queer. You can't, you know, everything here is mm -hmm. strictly queer. If we have things that are like queer friendly, um, things that educate, teach tolerance, like the No Hate campaign is a really good example because people support that even if they you know, aren't part of the queer community. I think it's just like um, just bringing people together is what's important and what we want to do. Like I said, this isn't like, oh, you come to this if you're queer. I mean, you can come to this no matter what. And that's what we want to do. We kind of want to um, bring together the you know, non-queer community and the queer community. We don't want them to feel like that they're isolated from us or that it's some kind of competition that who can fit in, you know, the most. We want to all be able to come together and just watch film. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to sit down with NC and DC. I really appreciate it. Sure. Mm -hmm.